Okay, so this is part one of creating an abstract painting that is derived from a photograph. I'm going to specifically be focusing on climate change as my topic, but it, climate change does not have to be your topic. Um, it, abstract paintings can be derived from any photographs. Um, to best ensure that you are not infringing on copyright issues, it is usually best practice to use your own photographs, but in this video, I'm going to be using photographs that are from a website. So I have a link right here. And there are tons and tons of photos and information about climate change on here. So I have already selected a few of mine. So I'm going to scroll to those. This is one. So this one is about dried forests and there's information, just a little bit of information about the photo here. Um, it would probably be a good idea to do a little more research on the topic and get familiar with what it's about. But here is the sketch that I created based on that photo. So here is the photo, here is my sketch. So I followed a couple of guides to help me come up with this design. I looked for shapes. So the trees reminded me of triangles. So I decided to go with triangles for my shapes. I decided on a color palette. So we don't wanna use the same color palette as the photo. You actually wanna use different colors. I did stick to green, but I decided to also incorporate black and teal into my color palette. Now you can pick any colors that you like. It could relate to your topic or it could just be a color palette that you think is visually pleasing. Um, and then I tried to make sure to keep some of the composition similar so that I can see some similarities between my sketch and the photo. So what I mean by composition is the way things are organized within the picture and where they're located within the borders. So the green trees are in the center. So I kept those green triangles in the center and all of the dried trees are kind of around the border. So all of my white triangles are around the green trees. And then I'm gonna incorporate some patterns onto my white trees as well, just to add some visual interest. So that's my first sketch. I also have a second one, so let me find that photo. Okay, this is the second photo that I chose to be inspired from and to derive um, information from to create an abstract painting. So this one is about wildfires. Again, it's got a teeny bit of information, but I would do a little more research to familiarize yourself with it. So sticking to my guides, I want to borrow shapes. I'm going to change the color, uh, the color palette but I'm going to stick to a similar composition. So here is the sketch that I came up with. I borrowed the shapes that I see. I changed the color palette. So rather than using yellows and oranges, I used black, this like kind of reddish pink and teal, but I stuck to the composition. So this shape is still in the center of my artwork. And I've got, you know, even the fence that's over here if you can see that. I even created like a similar pattern in the corner of my abstract sketch to kind of replicate that pattern of that fence. <clears throat> okay, so that is how you create your sketches for this type of artwork. And you'll have to select the one that you want to actually turn into a painting. So I have circled the dried forests. I just preferred that one. I thought it was just my personal choice. I thought it, I liked it better. So that's the one I'm going to be turning into a painting. Okay, I'm going to create my under drawing now. So I have my sketch next to me and I'm using that to help me plan where I'm going to draw my different shapes. And under drawing is just a pencil drawing that you do on your paper or your canvas before you start painting. It's best to keep this drawing pretty light because some paint colors like yellows and uh, Oranges don't cover pencil lines if you have really, really dark under drawings. Um, so go ahead and take your time sketching things out, erasing things if they don't look correct, and having a nice under drawing to guide your painting when you get started. Okay, I'm just about done with my underdrawing. I did darken a few of my triangles. Um, those are the ones that I'm gonna be painting green, and I know that green will cover dark pencil lines, but otherwise, be sure to keep that underdrawing nice and light. All 
All right, I'm gonna show you how to mix custom colors. You might use some colors directly from the bottle, but if you are not, um, you're gonna mix them in your palette. We are only gonna use the small circle section of the palette because we don't want to be wasting paint, so we just use a little bit at a time. So the first color I'm going to show you guys how to mix. Well, I'm only mixing one color, so you guys see my palette has three colors. One is mixed, so it's that bluish green right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a little bit of each color that I need to make that bluish green or teal or whatever you want to call it um, into the circle part of the palette. We're not using the large rectangle part because our classes are short and the paint will go to waste if we do. So I put a little bit of blue, a little bit of green, a little bit of white, not overflowing it because I need stir. And we're just going to use the end of a brush. So you just use the back side of the brush to mix it. You gotta mix it a lot until all the colors really blend together to see if it is what you want. And if you're having trouble figuring out how to mix the color, you can ask for my help and I can definitely assist you with figuring out what you need to add to get the color you'd like. So I felt like that blue um, didn't quite look like the color on my sketch. I wanted to add a little more white and a little more blue to try and get it to match, but it doesn't have to you know, match exactly. That's not necessarily going to be possible. We're going to get close to what you had planned. All right, I'm ready to start painting. I'm actually going to paint my green trees in the center of my artwork first. I'm going to look at a few brushes to select the best brush for what I'm painting. So I take out two green pointy brushes and I end up picking the smaller one I think that'll help me have better control and stay inside my shape. Um, you're gonna notice I don't take too much paint at once. I make sure just to get paint on the bristles, not on the gold part or on the handles so that my hands are not gonna get paint all over them. So you do have to dip your brush frequently. We're not scooping paint, we're just dipping a little bit at a time. All right, I'm gonna talk about a few techniques for applying your paint neatly, if that's your goal. Um, so you can watch the way that I hold my brush. I hold it similar to a pencil. I keep my arm lifted off the paper so I'm not rubbing my arm around on wet paint. And I go slow and I do long brush strokes and pull the paint across the paper, um, not leaving any big globs of paint. So that's another important thing. If you want to have a neat application, you want to just get a little bit of paint on your brush at a time and spread all of the paint out before you go back and dip for more. Um, I also don't jump around from section to section. I focus on one area at a time. And these are all things that work for me when I want a nice, even, and smooth paint application. Sometimes you wanna change brushes. So you see I grabbed a square-shaped brush because I have a larger tree I'm painting right now. And that's gonna fill it in a little bit faster than a skinny, pointy brush. So. Keep in mind that there's different brushes in the cup and if you're painting a large section, uh, a flat brush like this one that's square shaped is going to fill it in much more quickly than a pointy brush like the one I was using. Once your first layer of paint has dried, you can decide if you need a second layer. If it looks really splotchy and you're not happy with the look of that, you might want to add a second layer of paint. So I'm doing that with some of my green trees. The paint dries pretty quickly, so I was able to do that you know, about five minutes after I painted the initial layer. Okay, so I finished my green tree section and the next section I wanna paint is going to be my teal background. I made sure to choose a brush that I felt was gonna work really well for painting the background. I went with a flat brush. It's good for doing outlining. Um, and I'm gonna paint my entire background. I'm not gonna skip around from color to color because that just doesn't make sense. You'll have to wash your brush a bunch of times. So stick to one color, fill in everything that needs to be filled in. Also, I want you to notice um, that I turn my painting a lot. You don't have to keep your painting facing the same direction in front of you. 
Um, if you're having an area that's hard to reach, turn your painting, flip it over so that you can get your hand in a comfortable position to paint that section without smudging the wet paint all over the place. I'm done painting my outlines and I'm at a stage where I have to make a decision in my sketch. I had added some patterns to the dried trees, the white trees, and I have to decide if that's something I want to include or not. So I'm analyzing my artwork, kind of thinking about how I like it now and if I feel like it needs the patterns to look like it's complete or if it looks complete at this stage. So those are some things you need to do when you're painting is before you make a decision to add something else to your artwork, ask yourself if it needs it or does it look finished and complete the way that it is. I think I'm going to add them. All right, I think I'm going to stop there. There's a possibility I might want to add more patterns, but um, I think it's a good idea sometimes to pause and let yourself sit with a painting for a few days or for your case, maybe a week. So between classes and then um, you, when you come back, you might have a different feeling about what you want to do to it. So I'm going to hang this up in my classroom so I can look at it and decide if I feel like it needs more. Um, there's definitely some refining I still need to do, like areas where I have pencil lines and things like that that I'd want to erase, so it's not done by any means, but um, it's close.